Do you want to take your kick sound from this? To this? I'm going to get you there with a series of videos that cover EQing, compressing, and saturating a kick drum. In today's video, I'm going to cover the EQ. The easiest way to think about kick EQ is to divide the drum into low, mid, and high frequencies. The relationship between these three areas adds up to the kick sound. The approach that I use has three steps. Remove the problems, get the trouble right, then dial in the bass. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is listen to this kick in solo and sweep around with one band of EQ. I'm looking for harshness and resonance. I'm hearing a little bit of resonance down here. These upper bass frequencies can build up really quickly. A narrow cue cut here makes the kick hit harder and sound cleaner. There's also a little bit too much going on here. Okay, cool. Now let's get out of the solo and start adding trouble. I'm gonna do this with a shelf, which is a more natural way to add some high end. I'm listening for how the high end of the kick fits with the guitars. It also needs to match the vibe of the song. That's way too much click for this song, but it might fit a thrashier metal song. Okay, that's perfect. Each hit is heard clearly over the rest of the mix. Okay, now let's take a look at the bass. Just like the high end, I like to treat this area with a shelf. Using a parametric EQ can actually cause resonance at these low frequencies, so it's best to treat the whole area at once. That has a lot more punch, but now it's starting to get a little muddy. Let's try a high pass on the super low stuff. It's subtle, but the low end of the kick is a little more controlled. <laughs> Leave a comment below if you've been sleeping on the sub frequencies in your mixes. The last area I'm going to check out is the mid range. The relationship between the mid range and the high end controls how warm a kick sounds. In metal, it's pretty common to scoop out a lot of the mids. That sounds like this. It's a super hyped and unnatural sound that works for that genre, but it's not going to work with this mix. Let's try bringing the mids back in. That's starting to sound blocky and weak. Perfect, that's sitting just right for this song.
This kick is already sounding way better for this mix after a little bit of EQ. When you're doing this in your own mixes, try to keep these things in mind. Be careful how much EQ you're adding or removing. It's really easy to make things sound pretty unnatural. If you're working on headphones or in a poor room, make sure you're referencing. Getting the low end right will be a lot easier when you can actually hear the sub frequencies. Bypass each move of the EQ after you make it. Bypass the whole EQ plugin when you're done. Checking these moves will let you know if the drum is sounding better or just different. Make sure every move that you do in solo is checked also in context. No one is going to be listening to the kick just by itself, so make sure that it works with everything else in the mix. If you follow these guidelines, you'll get a perfect kick every time. If you want to learn more about EQing drums, I've made a free drum EQ cheat sheet that covers all of this and more. You'll learn how to clean up and enhance the whole kit from kick drum to cymbals. Check it out in the description below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.